YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for October 6th through 12th. This week I read four books, I watched two shows, I watched three movies, I listened to one book, and I listened to one album. Again, I'm not planning on making music a big part of this because, again, I don't listen to a lot, but the album has to do with the book, so it just makes sense I talk about it. The first book I finished this week was The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This one has obviously been all over booktube and the book internet in general, and it was pretty decent. This one is a hate-to-love romance, and it happens between a woman who feels that she is the unlucky twin between her and her sister. Her sister really gets everything out of life. She's really good at couponing, so she gets a lot of things for free, including most of the wedding she's hosting right now. Unfortunately, everybody gets sick at the wedding except for the unlucky twin and the best man. Since they are identical twins, the bride says, hey, you should take my trip for me because nobody's gonna t be able to tell that you're not me, and also you should take the best man because he's not not sick and he has the same last name as my husband. That would be because they're also brothers. And that's how this unlikely pair ends up on a 10-day trip to Hawaii where they obviously fall in love because it's a romance. I thought that this book was fine. Putting them in this type of setting means that they could go on adventures and do these interesting activities, which I really enjoyed because I would love to go to Hawaii and do these things. There's not anything specifically about this book that popped out and made me not like it as much as their previous reads. It's just not my favorite that I've read from them. Next I read Queer, which is a graphic novel anthology from 33 different artists over a few different decades. This I actually got as an interlibrary loan through my library, which is something I had never done before, so that experience was fun. Because I'm a giant nerd! But I could really take or leave this anthology. Some of it was very dark, some of it was definitely not safe for work, and I was reading it in the break room at work, so that was a little bit awkward. I should have known from the title of that one, which was porno, but there you have it. I was, however, delighted that there was a comic strip in there by Sasha Velour, who is somebody I know from RuPaul's Drag Race, and is fabulous, so that was cool to see that performer's art. Next we have The Perfect Nanny. This is a novel translated from French that I learned about on Jen Campbell's channel, and she said she read it all in one day, and you kind of know at the beginning that something terrible has happened. I'm gonna tell you what it is, because you know at the beginning. But you spend basically the whole novel trying to figure out how it got to that point. It kind of Tarantino's. At the very beginning of the novel you know that the baby is dead and the toddler is in critical condition and they're pretty sure the nanny did it. You then go back to when the nanny was hired and how much she loves these children and all the way through this process until this night to see how it got to that point. I found it a pretty quick and compelling read. Whoever did the translation did a very good job. I really enjoyed it. As much as one can enjoy murder of children, obviously. There were definitely a bunch of elements in the nanny's backstory that I thought might come into play and none of them did, and I wonder if they were just red herring and they were done really, really well, or if this was leaving me wanting more, and I can't really decide which one it is, which in itself is probably pretty good writing. Next for the Disability Readathon, I read A Silent Voice Volume 1. This is a manga about this boy who bullies the heck out of this deaf girl that comes to his school, and it goes on from this volume, but most of this volume is that. Because he bullies her and she is nothing but nice to him, he also ends up getting bullied because he's being a bully and then just gets this reputation. Eventually his bullying was so harsh that she actually left the school and they left contact, but years later they see each other again and she basically runs away from him and that's what you get in this volume. When I picked this up for the readathon, I thought we were going to be focusing on her perspective and not his, and I really wish we had been because I feel like it would be better representation for the readathon. I have a feeling that perhaps in future volumes we'd get more representation from her. But at this point it just feels like we've had this male lead learn that maybe I shouldn't be mean to people, which is a valuable lesson, but I was looking to learn more about her experience. We did learn a little bit about her experiences, but not as much as I was hoping. On to the TV shows I've been watching. Again, Brooklyn Nine-Nine plays pretty much at all times when I'm over at my partner's house. We're into the fourth season now. We're not really keeping track of episodes. It, the show is still fun. It still does things I really hate. Anytime there's a side plot where Terry suddenly gets fat and that's a problem, I just want to punch people. Which I find really interesting because there was a Point where somebody mentioned Ace Ventura and then somebody pointed out in the show that how transphobic the end of it was. So like, there are people writing the show that know that there's problematic things, just wish they knew all of the problematic things that maybe they shouldn't do. The other show, of course, was the current season of Survivor. This one was a lot of fun. Again, I'm just really enjoying the concept of this season and 
I know that some people have favorites. I tend to wait until at least the merge before I get a favorite, unless it's somebody who like immediately is interesting from the first episode. And I think that that's only ever really happened with Christian from the Heroes vs. Villains uh, season. I just really liked him from the first episode, probably because he was set up in the very first challenge to be such an underdog, and I love an underdog, and it was a good time. Not all contestants can be Christian, that's all I'm saying. On to the movies I watched this week, the first one being the Steven Universe movie. It was so much fun. I did not know that Steven was going to be aged up for the movie, so that was interesting. I just love that we got to see the characters again. They've all had different character growth, they're all doing interesting things, and then again, what happens was an interesting problem to solve that I very much enjoyed. We saw a new fusion that was just amazing. And even though the show wrapped up in a very good way, and even though the movie wrapped up in a very good way, I am on the team of I just want to see more things from these characters. Who knows if that will happen, but I know I'm not alone in just wanting to see more of these characters all times always. On the day it was released, I found out that there was going to be a Breaking Bad movie, El Camino, so I had to watch it that day because I did not want to be spoiled. Although I wonder if I would have been spoiled as I had no idea the movie was actually happening until the day of and I watched it. This is a movie that picks up right after the end of the last season of Breaking Bad, so if you've seen the last season you know what's going on. I don't think I, I can really talk about this movie in terms of plot, because if you haven't caught up on the show slash you don't want to be spoiled for the movie, I'm not going to be that person to mess up with that. What I can say is I really enjoyed seeing more from this world. I really enjoyed that they were able to bring these characters back together and it did feel like no time had passed and that's difficult to do. And of course I feel like giving Aaron Paul his own movie was a good idea because he is a phenomenal actor. Then last night I got my parents to watch the 2016 version of Ghostbusters. That's where I am, by the way. I'm at my parents' house. Today and tomorrow are the only days in this month that I have off together, and it's a holiday weekend, and my partner was coming up anyway, so I figured that I should come see my parents, which is why we're here. My mom painted that, and I feel like it was at an art class that is run by a woman that I call Auntie Anne, even though we're not related, and it brings me a lot of joy, so I made sure to put it in the background of this video. Anyway, obviously this was a rewatch of Ghostbusters for me, I just felt like I really needed to watch it again, and rewatching it I really just love the idea that all of the female leads are queer. That kind of subplot of Abby and Aaron used to be together and now they're ex-lovers and Holtzman's the new lover and Patty's comes in there and maybe there's gonna be something between Patty and Aaron in the next movie, which I'm pretty sure there's a next movie coming out next year. I was kind of scrolling through IMDb for some reason and I'm pretty sure I saw that. And I'm not willing to crush my own dreams by making sure that it's actually a thing, so I'm just gonna pretend it's actually a thing and it's going to happen. Onto the audiobook and album I listened to, both being Dear Evan Hansen. I am personally very glad that I listened to the audiobook, which is a novelization of the musical, before I listened to the album in full, because I've heard a song here or there from the album, but if you just sit there and listen to the album, it's really hard to get the entire picture of what's going on in the plot. It's not the type of musical that has songs going constantly, so there are a lot of scenes and dialogue in between the songs that you miss a lot of what's going on in the plot, and I'm very, very glad that I listened to the book first. That being said, while I was listening to the book, I was really hoping that Evan Hansen would fail. We were just getting to a point where lies were piling up too much, and I was actually very much hoping that those lies would be exposed because I was feeling very, very badly for the success that he was having even though he was telling all of these lies. That being said, obviously I knew why he was doing it and I'm going to s explain a little bit of the plot now, but I just want to throw that out there. Dear Evan Hansen is about a boy named Evan Hansen who is in therapy for anxiety and his therapist has asked him to write these letters to himself every day that start with Dear Evan Hansen, today is going to be an amazing day and this is why. On the first day of school he writes one of these letters but it doesn't follow the usual pattern. He's actually very depressed when he writes the letter and just kind of lets that out, prints it out for his therapist, and somebody else sees it. That somebody else is Connor Murphy, which is kind of awkward because Connor's sister Zoe is actually mentioned in the letter because Evan has a crush on Zoe. So Connor won't give the letter back and basically storms out of the computer lab, and Evan is left the next couple of days just devastated as to how this letter is going to come out and how people are going to know that he's a giant loser and all these things. He's always tried to fade into the background so he wouldn't have to deal with people picking on him. However, that's not how it plays out that night 
night, Connor actually commits suicide, and that letter is found in his pocket, and people believe that it is his suicide note, which makes it seem as though he and Evan were actually best friends. Not wanting to upset the Murphys even more, he goes along with, yes, we were secret best friends, and then just starts building these lies about it, and it goes from there, it gets very much blown out of proportion. And of course I'm not a monster, so I was feeling for Evan and what he went through during this, and obviously for the Murphys and everything like that. But there was a point around the 60% mark that I just really was on team Evan better get found out. I haven't seen the stage production, so I can't tell you how well the book translates from that and if it adds a lot of extra details or not. What I can tell you is I really enjoyed this book. It felt really well-rounded once the book finally finished out. I actually had a couple of songs from the musical that were acoustic in the audiobook, which I found was really cool, just little snippets, which makes a lot of sense because if you have this whole other musical that you can tap into for kind of extra details, why wouldn't you? This mental health read is definitely well worth your time, and if you have seen the show and read the book, can you tell me how they compare? Because I don't think I'm going to be able to see it anytime soon. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!